Well, hello, people, and welcome back to part 15 of Thassia, our Australia inspired build. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for the last week on our little vineyard build. Uh, you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of comments saying maybe we should try and find uh, a vine asset on the workshop, and thankfully, there is just the one. <laughs> like, quite literally, this is the only vine on the workshop. So, I think what we are going to do uh, is use Bob to actually uh, replace these out. So, we need to find the asset that has the pear tree on them. There we go. And then for this one, we want to search for the vine, this one right here. And then we want to change it out. So let's have a little look, see here what we think of this one. It does have some grapes on it as well, of course, which is very thematic, right? We can see some uh, 2D grapes right here. All right, but let me know what you think of it. Do we want to change these out for pear trees? I will change the whole thing. But uh, yeah, let's get it all changed up and then we can decide whether or not we do indeed like it. Okay, so there you have it. It does make the fruit fields look a lot more emptier, but I guess that's sort of the point with vineyards, right? But uh, let me know, do we prefer the grape trees or do we prefer these little workshop vines? Because uh, this is the only choice. It is quite literally the only vine tree on the workshop. So let me know what you think of it. But either way, today we're going to start working on Benezia. Now, a big shout out to King K in the Discord for some suggestions of using Noosa in Queensland as a bit of inspiration. Uh, for Benezia's beachfront, I'm going to do a little bit of a walk here, some hotels, a little bit of commercial, definitely not a super touristic beach like uh, Sentinel has, we don't really want to be going this touristic with it, but definitely some nice beach vibes to be had today. And we'll also develop a little bit in the main street, continue to add some residential into Benezia as well, as the town continues to grow out. And I think everyone's on board with a lighthouse possibly sitting on the edge of this little uh, peninsula over here. So, should be quite a lot of fun. Start building Benezia in City Skyline, shall we? So, for Benezia's beach, like we mentioned, we're looking at a place called Noosa in Queensland today, and I want it to be kind of a wooden boardwalk. Uh, so, we could download an asset off the workshop for this, but I think we can actually use the pedestrian roads and a little bit of insertion marking tool to achieve this. So, I want to start by, first of all, just positioning my uh, pedestrian road kind of where I want it to sit in and around the build. Uh, we will, of course amend this one here so it hugs the roundabout in an appropriate fashion at least and we can get some nice detail in there as well I hope but generally I just want it to sort of hug the grid line here as it moves around the beachfront come off that angle snap here as well yeah through that grid so just a little bit setback from the road and this is going to allow us to place some buildings and commercial between the road and the boardwalk of course right now this is quite modern sandstone isn't it so uh, let's come into uh, the wonderful world of Robert. Okay, so we're going to grab this guy. And I want to actually remove these light poles here because they're a little bit too modern looking for what I'm after. So we're just going to say no thank you and get rid of those. And then we want to replace them with a park light. And I think the uh, modern light pole number three is a little bit more less modern, I guess. So we want to increase the probability here. We'll say yes please to that. It's okay, so it gets rid of that really modern sort of light pole that comes with the uh, plaza pedestrian road, which is nice. Uh, we can also move this left and right as well if we want to come the end. Uh, but that only achieves sort of one half of the boardwalk, doesn't it? So let's come into IMT and we'll grab a section here. And then I want to do a filler across the whole road. So we'll hold Alt to achieve that and then just fill this whole thing in. Uh, we want to change this to a decal and then we can actually select the nature reserve tiles to do this. And we can also just position uh, these little nodes up to the edge of the concrete as well if we wanted to but I don't mind a little bit of a concrete uh, lip on the edge of that decal so I'm happy to do that and then you just hold control as well to move these points around the network but that really changes up the whole vibe of the sandstone pedestrian road doesn't it when we change out the light for something a little bit less dominant and then we also use a decal filler with IMT to turn it into a wooden pathway instead of a sandstone one so that's the process with what we want to happen with the beachfront and then with the insertion marking tool because this mod is the best thing in the world uh, we can just apply this to the entire road with one simple click right it's incredible what a mod <laughs> IMT has just come so far hasn't it uh, and we also want to make sure we're the same height here as well and uh, we'll get some nice trees and whatnot along here and uh, different sort of fillers and whatnot but that does give us a boardwalk against the beach, which is very fancy, right? Okay, I'm a huge fan of that. And uh, I don't really mind the change in elevation, but just for 
Say good place in assets. I think it's going to be easier if we are all on at the same height at least. So let's go ahead and get everyone up to the same height as this one here. It's not going to cause anyone too much trouble, I don't think. And then we'll also do the same thing with these as well. So in terms of where our little boardwalk is going to end, I think just at the junctions here is going to be perfect. Uh, I'm not sure why you're trying to form as a bridge. You really don't need to. Go for something like that. Move up here as well a little bit. And then in terms of the other side, uh, we'll definitely have a connection in from this one as well. But I'd also like this boardwalk to run down to the lighthouse as well, I think. So we'll keep this going possibly to here. And then can we just connect back in like that? I don't think that's going to be too bad, is it? And again, we can now just grab this and say reapply to the whole uh, road and it's going to do it again for us. And we possibly need to... I guess we could have it go down there, couldn't we? I don't know. Maybe we'll make this, this side of the beach a little bit overgrown. I think that's probably a better shout for it. There's a lot of sort of thick foliage and whatnot around the beach that we're looking at in Noosa. So we'll try to respect that where we can. Cool, so now we have a wooden boardwalk with a slightly less dominant light and now we can shift its position and whatnot and change its angles and depth as we come to place assets in it. So let's get this hooked in here as well. Go straighten it out a little bit, move some nodes if we need to. And before I forget, we also had a wonderful name session from Troy last episode for the vineyards to be called Tassoni Vineyards, which of course is perfect for the town of Benezia. Thanks so much, mate. Great idea. Uh, but either way, let's move into a little uh, time lapse here where we're placing some commercial so we can see Benezi's beachfront come to life a little bit. Have a little walk along Benezia's beach, shall we? Use a whole mix of assets here. We've got After Dark, Nightlife, Africa in Miniature, King Leno Shopping Malls, University City. Uh, there's a real good mix of stuff here. Also got one of our Australian police cars drive along as well. Amazing work from Era 404, of course, on those assets. And I love that you can see the vineyards from the beach as well, right? That's really cool from the build we did last episode. 
tremendously happy with that. But uh, yeah, it's not turned out too badly. Uh, it's a good mix here. Again, we're looking at Nusa, so there is little pops of height there. It's not all super low density as what it would be in city skylines. And nice little mix, not too touristic, you know, not loads of bars and nightlife like Sentinel has. So uh, it's turned out pretty nicely. Big fan of this uh, seafood grill here as well, right? Super thematic. Very happy with it. Paddy's Pub, of course. So I'm liking the way that it is indeed developing. I've also plopped a bunch more at residential as well because we were having uh, some worker demands whinging on the beach. So that should hopefully see that through. Uh, but otherwise, it's not looking too bad. Um, I definitely want to do another church area for Benezia because these guys don't have uh, any death care at all. So at the minute, they're having to drive uh, from Sentinel or Valkyrie to actually pick up the dead, which is a little bit too far. So I think we'll do a church build here. Uh, so where should we find one? Let's have, find a nice little spot for it. I reckon just off of the main street should be a nice little spot. And then we can almost use this churchyard here as an excuse to blend into suburbia whenever we get around to building that. So we'll place three graveyards down. Let's come into our search criteria and we will go for a church. Because we've got a couple of them. Uh, the old New Zealand one is always our firm favourite these days, isn't it? Have this here. And how far can we get away with pushing you back? So let's have it about here, I think. That should be good enough. And then again, we'll get some uh, pathways down, I think. So let's have one uh, straight up at the front. And then we'll feed this around the back of the church. We'll sort of wrap up these graveyards here. So it's almost like people are walking through them. Make sure we've got our angle snap on as well. Something like that. And then come around the back of the church too. Although, are we all at the same height here? Something there that's messing with the height, isn't it? That's not totally, totally smooth. Okay, I don't mind that. I reckon we can get away with some uh, parking here as well. Can we get a, a vanilla one in? I think we probably can. Don't want it on its side though. Let's see if we can rotate that around to look something like that. Let's get a bit of fencing we haven't used in a while. Uh, we don't really use forestry fence all that much, do we anymore? So. Then we'll go with a bit of forestry, why not? Run this here. Okay, let's box in our graveyard a little bit. We'll have this run straight the way down there. And that should start to create a little bit of a graveyard facility for us. I think as well, we will get some decals down uh, on these pathways as well during our detail and time lapse. Just so we can have a little bit more colour than just that flat grey. Get some repeated column in our trees in here too, I think. Okay. Always a nice way to satisfy death care, these little mini graveyards, and of course these assets here. Realistic working cemeteries are just perfect for them, aren't they? Cool, so that should give us another little church development there. Why don't you offer some more colourful bushes out front of the church as well? Okay, God loves a bit of colour after all. Some of these, I really enjoyed using these last episode. These little colourful bushes. Something like that, a couple of little ferns around them maybe. Uh, you guys also said last episode that we should absolutely be running uh, a bus line up to the vineyard. So we'll do that as well. Uh, so we'll start from outside of the train station. Seems the most logical point for it. So we'll have that there. Uh, and then you can run... Oh, remember, Egg, you are on left-hand drive. <laughs> we will we'll learn one day. So yeah, come straight up and then just stop directly outside the stairs of the vineyard, which would be perfect. Uh, and then it can come back down into town. Do we want to run it elsewhere? Uh, I guess we could maybe have it stop by the beach, I suppose. Maybe run back through this way, pick up some people by the beachfront. Uh, stopping again on Main Street and then looping back over this way. And then we want to grab uh, this one here and change it to the minibus model, I think, is going to be the best one. So, thank you for all, all the suggestions on the episodes. Do appreciate it. Minibus would be much welcome addition to ferry people uh, back and to, to the vineyard in Benezia. Look how busy the train station is now too, right? Everyone walking back and to from that train line that of course runs all the way back to Valkyrie now. Let's see how many people get off here. It's already getting really busy. Busy than I thought it would be, actually. Also using the back entrance here as well because we've got that pathway in. That was tremendously satisfying, isn't it? And again, people taking the dirt pathway down to the beach here as well. Fantastic. So we, we should do with working on Main Street really this episode before we head into a detail and time lapse. 
And I don't think I'm averse to actually just a bit of zone in here. I'm not massively bothered about having specific plopper balls. Of course, unless anything horrific grows in. But I think for the first time in this year, that we will just do a bit of zoning, which I think would be welcome. There's a little spot there in the a crack in the zoning, isn't there, where we can get a pathway in there. Let's do that, and then we'll allow that dirt pathway to carry on, because the sims do seem to be enjoying using that route. So we'll just slightly change the configuration there. Uh, we could also use no controller to add a cross in there. It would keep them away from the light, I suppose. And um, we could just change this to a cross in. Drag that node up ever so slightly. I guess we could do that. Is he going to use it? Yeah, it keeps him off the main junction here then, doesn't it? Okay. Don't hate that. So, we'll let Main Street grow up a little bit. Uh, how are we doing for education? I imagine these guys are in need of uh, something. Yeah, you're all pretty uneducated out in Benezia, aren't you? Not surprised. Everyone's pissed on mine. Uh, we need a high school campus, really, don't we, for here? I think we do. Uh, we've got some nice big uh, areas here as well for campuses to fill. Uh, I think we'll actually dive in first of all and start the campus off with one of Bad Peanut's sports fields. What haven't we used yet? So Sentinel has Australian football and cricket. And Sentinel or Valkyrie has Aussie football and cricket as well, doesn't it? We haven't really done that much actual football in Thessia yet, have we? So let's go with a community soccer park, because this is a chungus of an asset. Have we zoned here? No, okay. So we will use this area here then as a way to squeeze into some actual football. These are really nice assets, of course. Missing this pack. Definitely one of the better ones to get. Bad peanut sports venues. Two I wouldn't mind, actually, is... Um, an actual stadium from Bad Peanuts Pack in Benezia. Not like one of the massive ones, but just a small one. There is no Australian football stadiums, is there, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, we do actually have one from the workshop, but that's definitely going in the downtown. Medium soccer stadium here. Now, it's obviously not going to live here. I just want to test the vibe of having a larger stadium here. As opposed to just another sports field. This is the smallest of the unique stadiums, so we could definitely have this here. I don't hate it, you know. It's quite a nice feature, isn't it? It's a slightly larger asset to sit within the town itself. Then we can get away wrapping some car parking around it too. Cool, we're getting some decent assets growing up here on Main Street as well. Let's make sure we make the ones that we like historical. See, this is the benefit of zoning sometimes. I think sometimes, you know, with mods it's always sort of the go-to to start plopping stuff but when you zone there's so many different variations of patterns and props that can come in with the game and that you don't get when plopping like these little car parking spaces outside a bookstore and same outside the game non-stops as well so i definitely think we should also not totally ignore zoning in this year but you do get some fun designs with them so we'll see what carries on uh, growing over here definitely have to have a hotel on the main street as well yeah, start letting this develop here. So let's turn our attention to the stadium then. So we'll remove this one if the stadium's going to be the meat and potatoes. We'll have this uh, sit within this larger space here where it is going to be disconnected, but that's okay. Uh, we could actually connect it in with a pedestrian pathway because, of course, we've got the pedestrian zone nearby. Which wouldn't make sense, of course. Uh, so let's just drag that over there. That should allow it to be serviced. I think we'll probably switch out for... Something with tree lining, maybe? Not a, that's not a big tree lining, <laughs> it's just only the one tree. But uh, we can make it work. Let's go for... We do have gums against the beach though, so maybe not. Maybe not here. Uh, let's go for a traveller's palm, maybe. Cool. Please do get name suggestions down below for the football team in Benezia. I really want it to be called. Uh, and then we'll use some... Parking roads here, coming off the nodes around the back to provide a little bit of car parking here for the stadium. So we'll have different patterns in, come back in there as well. This can come back around the side. 
Hopefully down to here. And can we get away with two different 10 unit stretches here? Just want a road length as well. Just don't want our nodes to be too packed together. Otherwise we will be having issues later down the line. Uh, and I guess they don't really need another exit there, do they? We could provide another one in there. That would be okay. Cool. And then we'll surface paint up between here with a little bit of gravel because... I don't want this to turn into Ilos. I don't want car parks and concrete everywhere. We were not in Phoenix anymore. So we'll try and get a little bit of dirt in where we can. Maybe up and around here as well. We can do a little bit of a sort of tree and flower border between the stadium. Make it look a little bit nicer. Let's try and get some of our larger trees in that we're a fan of. Try to keep it fairly sporadic. Get some of those shrub clusters in there as well. I think this should help settle the stadium in, especially since the stadium's got trees around it too. Yeah, trying to take the opposite of Ilos' stadiums, <laughs> which of course were just surrounded by endless car parks. But I don't mind this, okay? This is alright. Uh, it actually looks like the edge of those. I haven't actually played with these um, stadium assets in modded yet, so I don't really know the capability of them. If we draw in a pedestrian pathway here is it actually going to work I'm not sure we'll find out together so let's bring that down we want no road length here as well and then we'll see if we can just blend this front space in with some uh, vanilla walking pathway it should work because they do tend to walk on these things i think bring that down here again and make it a nice big interconnectable walkable area do the same thing over here again as well and can we drag the end of this node up a little, up to the front of the stadium? Fantastic. And then I think we've got some nice designs to do out here during our D-Town talents, haven't we? Well, I definitely don't mind that in there. I imagine that's going to be a pretty divisive one. But uh, a larger stadium feature within the town of Benezzi is going to be welcome, I think. Maybe they can be sponsored by Sony Vineyards. Something like that. There's the minibus as well. Get much use. Yes, it is, actually. Although no one wants to get on it. Is that because you're full? We need more vehicles on the line. Uh, there's still a few empty ones knocking about. Stops aren't horrendously busy either. Yeah, they, think they just need to stagger, don't they? And then it should be okay. How many people got coming through the train station? 104. It's getting busier, isn't it? Not bad, though. Uh, yes, all these are whinging. No problem. We will get workers in. Um, so we've got a bit more room to plop over here, haven't we? Uh, I reckon we could also change Benezia's theme up to European Suburbia as well. And then we can probably get some zonings in around this space here. Because again, we'll get some different prop patterns spawning in with zoning compared to plopping all the time. So we'll go for a couple of different bits and pieces over here. European Suburbia is always a good shout. See if we can get some of those worker demands satisfied. Uh, we did mention a couple of episodes ago in Sentinel that I'd be interested in some high density um, for Sentinel, but apparently there's a lot of regulations and rules and planning with high density Oz stuff. So tower blocks are kind of out of the question. But I think we can still make do with some of our other high density options, be that the case of water wall or green cities. You know, if we were to place in some water wall stuff, Definitely don't mind these. They kind of almost double up as little public works of art as well, don't they? Because of the murals on them. Which I think for a town like Benezi, that's definitely focused around its wine. Would certainly be helpful. Because we do need to start up in Thessia's population. Right, what, we're in episode 15? We only have 11,000 population. Which I guess is just a symptom of playing with the, uh, you know, the smaller town vibe, isn't it? You don't get as much population into the same space as you would if you were building what you would consider, consider like a regular city's build, right? But I definitely don't mind some wall-to-wall -wall residential here. I think it's, you know what, one, two, three, four, five story apartments. So hopefully not breaching the high rise regulations of Australia. For these smaller towns. So many people walk, walking about now, there wasn't there? Really great to see. Little churchyard coming on there too. I'm definitely happy for some more commercial zoning to knock up around the back of these as well. Let's get all this filled in. And I was not neglect parks either. I feel like I'm constantly neglecting parks just because we play modded. Um, let's go for 
one of the larger vanilla ones. We've also got a space here where we could squeeze this in. But the horrific vanilla trees absolutely need to go. So let's get a shot of those. Uh, let's go for gum. I think so. Gum is the tree of the day, isn't it? Absolutely love the gum trees. Fantastic news. Cool. So don't mind this. Let's go ahead and expand the pathways out. Bring them up to wherever they'll go. Again, I want them add a bit more commercial here as well, backing on to uh, the beachfront. And I think we can just continue to surround this major park with further park assets. Let's get a little 4x4 community number in here as well. Uh, this is one of few Candy's parks, by the way. If you haven't checked out the little selection that she's made of these ploppable parks, they're, they're a great complement to the park tab. I uh, ended up getting quite a lot of use out of them, actually. I think we can have one of those in. Uh, let's return to our wonderful world of zoning as well. Let's get some zonable commercial in. And then that should hopefully fill a decent space within the town centre for some park and recreation to take place. Love as well that these water wall buildings sit so nicely. Great all these little alleyways. Pod, if you heard that cocoa shake as well. Uh, the brown bear has just arisen from her nap. Otherwise, that's not bad, is it? The town is actually coming to life now, which I'm tremendously happy with. Just got to wait for a few of these assets on the main street to change. Make sure we don't have any horrendousness growing out here. Happy with a little petrol station there as well. Let's make sure we historicalise that one. All these little fast food joints too. So, you know, I've got all this little prop work now that's spawned in that we wouldn't have had from plopping down these assets because you don't get all the little prop work on the back of them. It's definitely worth considering plopping, you know. Well, there's people. It's please, everyone. Walking porn starting to formulate in Benazi now, isn't it? Things we love to see. Cool. But otherwise, pretty random episode today. But it's time to get it detailed. We've got a lot of work to do uh, along the beach front roundabout once detailing. At the front of our stadium as well. There you go. Proof is in the pudding. They are using the pathway here. Even though they are all turning right. Much rather you go that way. <laughs> but whatever. It looks like they're all getting ready for a match day, actually, doesn't it? Which is nice. Yeah, we're walking up into their seats now, which is cool. Awesome. So they'll enjoy the match day. Hopefully we'll be able to catch that in the cinematics, but generally fill out the area. Lots of detailing. Get some very light beach props, a couple of parasols and sun lounges. I don't want a massively overpopulated beach here. I bring around some overgrowth around the edge of the beach. Lots of that dessier brush. Refine the park carriage with some detailing. And any zonable areas that we don't like, just sort them all out and make the main street a bit fancier. Generally tie up today's builds and a bit more detailing. Should be a lot of fun. That was detail at Benazia's centre, and then we'll be right back.
Venezia town, shall we? So first of all, we'll head across the rail up to our high density condos where we've now uh, introduced one of the new parks in between them. And I absolutely love this design. Um, a park separating a bit of wall to wall. Like, new favourite thing. I <laughs> love these new pond parks. And that's a really nice, nice little addition into the suburbia. Uh, our open park space is now spread out with more trees, a little bit of commercial in there as well. Uh, more parks over here. So it's just into a bit of a kind of busy town park hub now with commercial and services and tables and general park space to enjoy around this. Uh, more commercial has also uh, popped up in and around the train station before we do merge back onto uh, Main Street Benezia, which is a lot less over the top than Sentinels, which is really the vibe I wanted to do. Kind of want uh, Benezia to be more of a town for the locals and perhaps the older traveller and tourist, whereas Sentinel is definitely more of a sort of party town, sort of place where the Instagrammers and TikTokers go to, unfortunately. But it's pretty nice, got a statue at the end of the road, uh, some tasteful commercial that we've had, had zone in. Uh, there's a good mix of assets knocking around here and it's turned out pretty nicely. Uh, dropped in these uh, brick decals over our pathways using IMT, which really brings the graveyard to life a little bit. I love doing this with our death care stuff now. Easy my favourite thing to do in modded, I think. Uh, so now the little graveyard and of course our, our suburbia has grown up around it. Uh, next episode we are going to work on kind of the left side of this road and also come and do the locals beach over down here as well to kind of round off Benezia. I'm thinking we'll do some mansions out here. I want to try and see if we can do some uh, fun fusing with vanilla assets to create some mansion complexes out in the foothills of Benezia. That's sort of overlooking to the vineyards here. It should be quite a fun build, so we'll do that next week. Uh, also dropped in a police station that we have from the workshop with some police cars in here as well, just parked on the side of the road, uh, which turned out quite nicely. Uh, our stadium has been detailed with trees covering these car parking spots to give a bit of shade. Uh, some classic bush lining against the pathways just to highlight them. Uh, and the service point actually settled in quite nicely over here as well, didn't it? Uh, I really like how this sits. Uh, further down our road, we're doing a little bit of terraforming. There was just too much land here that I didn't really want to use. So we've allowed the coast to move a little bit closer towards the shoreline. Here we do have some rocks. Uh, some classic Thessia overgrowth. Uh, and then the lighthouse, uh, which was suggested by you guys uh, to sit on the edge of this little peninsula here, which I think sits in quite nicely. Uh, I do enjoy the lighthouse. Uh, the beach itself was quite hard to detail um, without taking it too touristic like Sentinels. And again, I'll throw up some inspiration of what we're looking at on Google Earth. Um, there is kind of parasols and then not parasols and empty beach and then there's just towels. So not a super touristic beach and we've also got a pedestrian pathway uh, actually flowing through this area of the beach if we can find it. Yeah, there we go. So we do have invisible pathways in the attempt to try and bait some people to walk down uh, onto the beach to make it a little bit more active. But we might end up placing some hangout markers down here. But uh, I do like it, you know, it's not nearly sort of busy and as active as Sentinel's beaches are. And they've kind of got a cute little sort of view from the boardwalk here, looking out over those pretty impressive mountains to uh, the north of Benezia. It's a really nice view up there. And I love how the boardwalk turned out. Really fun. Also dropped in little clusters of overgrowth and palmage against the beach here as well, just to help give it a bit more differentiation away from the rest of the beachfront. And then pathways here as well on the corners that are getting used to get people back into from the road network and whatnot. And they're all popping back up here uh, towards the train station, which is insanely busy. Uh, there's a ton of people uh, getting back into to Benezia now. And we will have a little look at the train line, actually, because I know uh, it is getting quite busy. Let's have a little look at it here. So this one's about half full. Let's look how busy all the trains are, right? Keeping everyone moving back into between the three major towns. And it'll be really interesting as well once we get into downtown, which honestly isn't that far away now. Um, I kind of need to... I think about getting downtown done before City Skylines 2 drops and there's still a lot more projects to take on in uh, Thessia uh, before we do call it a day but you know Cities 2 is on the horizon so downtown will probably come a little sooner than we're used to. I think once we're done with Benezia uh, we will bring all these networks in to start constructing something of a downtown frame to form around this bay which is where we're planning on having it of course but we'll finish Benezia before we do get out there. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. If you've enjoyed it, likes, comments, and shares below really do help me out. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Really enjoyed this town. It's a similar vibe to Sentinel because we're working with a beachfront, but not nearly as kind of 
touristic and nightlife heavy and as bold as Sentinel is. And we'll definitely return here next week as well to work on the private locals beach, which will be quite fun. And then we'll also do some mansions as well, once we have a more luxury estate housing knocking around near Benezia. So that should be quite fun. But otherwise, please do enjoy your cinematics, but I'll shut up and leave it there. And let's thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.